So what we're going to do in this video is draw the pi molecular orbitals of both of these molecules and see whether this reaction is symmetry allowed or symmetry forbidden. Now to start off, how are we going to draw these pi molecular orbitals? Well, first we have to figure out how many carbons are in a conjugated system, so where they have conjugated double bonds like these. So for this hexatriene, we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons that are conjugated. Now, that means we have six pi orbitals. That also tells us that we have six different phases in which we have bonding and anti-bonding interactions. So what does that look like? So we have our basic six carbons right here drawn, and each of them has their pi orbitals. And then we can have up to six different phases into which the pi orbitals are either bonding or anti-bonding. So what is this going to look like? So the highest energy ones are going to be drawn on the top, and those are going to have the most anti-bonding interactions, while the ones drawn on the bottom are going to have the most bonding interactions. So just to label, this is going up in energy. So the ones that go up in energy are less stable, and you want less electrons occupying those orbitals. So what does this look like? So in the bottom one, all of our electrons in the pi orbitals are going to be in phase. If we remember what our waves look like, electrons act like a wave. When we add two waves together that are in phase, we get constructive overlap. So this is what it means for them to be in phase. And we're just going to label that by coloring it with the blue color, with either the blue color or the green color, and showing that they are, have these bonding interactions with each other. So we'll have one phase, the positive phase, for example, we'll call it the blue one and the green phase will just be the other phase. So this will help us differentiate between the two phases. Now, the next molecular orbital diagram that's higher in energy is going to have one node in it. And a node is represented by a dashed line. Now what's a node? Well, a node is an area where there's zero electron density, and we don't want that. We want our electron density to be spread out all over these carbons, and that'll stabilize this hexatriene. So when we have a node of zero energy, of zero electron density, what happens is that you have your pi orbitals, and then in one of them, it's actually out of phase. So they actually look like this. They just basically switch their phase. And so they don't, basic, they don't overlap properly. We have one anti-bonding interaction. So this interaction right here is an anti-bonding interaction. They're out of phase. You have destructive overlap. Now the next higher one in energy has two nodes. Now where do we put these nodes? My method is just splitting these to the right and the left and removing the one in the middle. So we have a nodes, we have nodes like these. And so we can redraw our orbitals like this. So those are that will be our blue phase, and our green phase will look like this. Now, if you don't have colors, you can just color in one of these phases and that'll make it easier. Now, what of what about the next higher one energy? Well, I'm going to split these two like this to the right and the left. I'll split this one to the right and the left, and we'll move where they're at. So we'll have a node here, a node here, and a node here. So if we draw the phases, it'll look something like this, where we have up to three anti-bonding interactions. And our green phases will be right here. What about the next one? I'm going to do the same thing with this node, split it to the right and the left, and remove it in the middle. So we have a node here, node here, node here, node here. So we have up to four anti-bonding interactions. So our phases will look something like this. And for our green phases, like this. So you only have one up to one bonding interaction here. And our highest energy molecular diagram is where we have nodes between every single pi orbital. And so this is the least stable because we have complete destructive overlap. And the phases just keep switching between pi orbitals. So that will be our completely anti-bonding molecular orbital. Now, we do have six, we have six electrons that occupy this hexatriene that are in this pi, orbital, pi orbitals. So how are they going to be split up? Well, they want to go to the lowest energy more molecular orbital. So they're going to start off with this one. We're going to have two that are going to be paired up in this molecular orbital. The next two that are going to be paired up are in this one. And the last two are going to be paired up in this one, because we have six electrons. And these ones are not going to be paired up. So what do we call these molecular orbitals? Well, we're going to label them. We're going to call this one pi 1, pi 2, and pi 3. And then we're going to call the last three pi 4, pi 5, and pi 6. 
And since the first three are going to be our bonding orbitals, where we have the most amount of bonding interactions, we'll just keep them as pi. And since our last three are the most anti-bonding interactions, we're going to call them pi stars. So what other ways of labeling can we call this? Well, since this one is our highest occupied molecular orbital, this is going to be called the HOMO, and the HOMO molecular orbital. And then here we have our lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, so it's called the LUMO. And why is this important? Well, because the HOMO of the hexatriene is going to interact with the LUMO of this propene and is going to tell us whether this reaction is going to be symmetry allowed or symmetry forbidden. Essentially, will this reaction occur and we'll get a diels alder reaction. And so, if we want to know what the LUMO of the propane looks like, it's simply where we have our two pi orbitals and one of them, and they're just out of phase. Because the only other or molecular orbital that we can have for propane is when both of them are in phase. So it's pretty simple compared to hexatriene. So let's start to try to draw this. If we wanted to draw this, what would it look like? Well, we have our hexatriene and we have our pi orbitals like this on each of the carbons. And we're going to have the end carbons right here. These two pi orbitals are going to interact with the pi orbitals on propene. Now the HOMO of hexatriene looked something like this, where we had up to two nodes. And so it looks something like that. We have our green phase looks like this. Now what about Propene. Well, propene's LUMO looks something like this. Now, what do we see here? Well, over here we have a bonding interaction. So that's good. But over here we have anti-bonding. And so since we have anti-bonding in this interaction, this reaction is going to be symmetry forbidden. We don't have, we don't have complete bonding interactions between these pi orbitals. And so it'll be hard to make a diels alder reaction go through. Now, now we've figured out that it's symmetry forbidden, but what can we do to make this reaction go? Well, if we just happened to give UV light, if we just sent UV light onto hexatriene, what ends up happening is that the, one of these electrons in the HOMO orbital will get excited and will go to the next highest energy orbital, so it'll go to the LUMO. And so now this one right here is the new highest occupied molecular orbital. So we're going to call it HOMO star. And this one is the new lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So it's the LUMO star. So now we can interact HOMO star with propene's LUMO and try to see if this reaction works. So if we were to draw that, what we'd get is this. So we have our hexatriene with its pi orbitals on each of its carbons. And the HOMO star, if we see what it looks like, we have up to three nodes. So let's draw these with three nodes basically out of phase. So a node right here, a node right here, and then a node right there. So we get this. So this is what it would look like with the green phases as well. As for propene, we have our two pi orbitals. Still LUMO, we're not going to change the fact that it's LUMO. So we have a blue over here and a blue over here, and the green will be on the opposite side. So now what we actually see that both of these have bonding interactions. Since they both have bonding interactions, this will work. This interaction will work. So what do we call this? Well, since over here we just used heat in order to make this reaction work, this is thermally forbidden because just adding heat will not make this work. Now, since we added UV light and we got it to work and have bonding interactions, this is photochemically allowed. So if it's photochemically allowed, we can just use UV light like this onto hexatriene, excite one of its electrons and get this dales alder reaction to work. So, that's how you draw pi molecular orbitals for a conjugated system and see whether it is symmetry allowed or symmetry forbidden.